right, so how did you feel already? <laughs> process like if you if we had started at the beginning of the day and you tried to write your hypothesis based on the little kiddo in your vignette it would have been really difficult right mm -hmm. it would have been hard to frame it to narrow it down to keep it specific on what we were really working on so that assessment piece is really helping us to organize our thoughts organize the information in a way that by the time you get to the hypothesis it's pretty easy to pull it together into a cohesive statement so so when, when you have the hypothesis, though, you really don't have a plan. You don't have the plan, and that's what we're going to work yeah. on next. Yeah. But really, we've done all the really hard legwork, right? We've mm -hmm. figured out all the information. We've front-loaded it so that when we sit down to make the plan, we're, we're, we have everything we need, and it's a pretty smooth transition into that next step. So if you're not sure about the hypothesis, there's some questions you can ask. What would make the challenging behavior stop? Mm -hmm. Is it something that you provide or allow the child to access? Is it something you're doing? Is it something they have access to? Is there something that we could remove and it would change the situation? Um, can we allow the child to leave? So there's just different questions you can ask if you're having tr trouble coming up with the um, hypothesis. If you're still unsure, then go back and collect some more data. Maybe we missed the gorilla that was walking through the room, right? And it's just not making sense and it's not pulling together properly. So go back and look at it again or have someone else with a different set of eyes take another look at the situation and see if they're seeing the same things that you're seeing. Um, some challenging behavior is going to have the same form, but it really is serving multiple functions. Like you guys were talking about with your video. She's biting, but she may also be trying to get out of some situations. And it may present itself all in the same form. She may choose biting to, uh, what was it, get attention, remind me. When her toy was, when she Oh, she wanted a toy. Or she might want to get out of something, too. So, we, children are smart, yeah. really smart, and so they might be using the same form to, to use to serve multiple functions. So maybe you've addressed function number one, but you're still seeing that same form present itself, the same biting or hitting, and you're thinking, huh, they're both huh, I don't know what, yeah, it's like one of their this first choice. For this. Well, Let's try it for this. Yeah, so then we have to reevaluate. Maybe there's a couple things that are sitting in there that we need to address. There's two things hidden in your sand pot. Mm -hmm. oh, I should have done that. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> and some just begin around one function and then they continue to serve another. So maybe hers originally started as trying to get a toy, but now it's turned into something else where she can also avoid doing other things. Like I said, kids are smart. They're going to build on it. They're finding success. Hey. Let's keep this going. We gotta, we gotta get thing going here. So now it's serving an additional function. So Albert Einstein's quote, if at first the idea is not absurd, then there is no hope for it. So just keep an open mind, even though it seems wild, it it still might be absolutely plausible that that is what is going on. And the considerations that we want to make when we're thinking of these is to develop policies processes and procedures. We want to work together. And it's going to take time and expertise. And we may not be the most, I mean, you obviously have a lot of background, Jessica, but we may not be the most expert opinion in the, or ex, expert in the room when it comes to pulling together these behavior support plans. So just remember that it's going to take time. We might figure out that we're going down the wrong road and we have to circle back and try it again. Um, and just know that there's other people on the team that can support you and that's why it's really important that this is a team effort because we don't have to be the sole source of knowledge to figure this whole thing out all by ourselves. And we do have a lot of access to coaches and trainers. Um, like Annie was saying, I mean, Kathy Moyer is a great resource, but there's also a lot of people within the pyramid that we can tap into. If you're having trouble specifically, feel free to contact us or 
some of the coaches that that's their specific job is to come into a specific situation, a specific classroom, and really hone in on those practices. So if you are struggling, there are resources that are beyond just um, some community resources. We have a lot of peer resources with the coaches and trainers. Well, and I say Kathy too because she knows about oh for the sure um, yeah, you know for sure uh, and best practices and all yeah that. and if she doesn't know she has an amazing network of she people is. to call upon yeah. so I wouldn't put, I wouldn't underestimate her ability to find the answer if she doesn't know it so. Uh, so the region messages for just this piece when we're talking about a functional behavior assessment is. Now we want to use universal practices. It's going to increase the likelihood that we produce a really effective behavior support plan. Uh, the functional behavior assessment is used to determine the function of the behavior. It consists of the triggers, the behavior, and the consequences. And then ultimately we understand the function of what that behavior is telling us. We really want to make sure that we know when you're looking at it, kids are either trying to get something or get out of it. That's it. It's not control, it's not anything else. It's get or get out. And the hypothesis statement is our best guess to just summarize it all, and it's what we're going to use as our beginning step, our launching pad, for getting into the real beat of the behavior support plan. How do you guys feel about it? Feel better equipped than when you first started? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And even just using that ABC, so now you can look at your daughter and kind of pull yourself back and say, okay, well, she wants my attention. This is what, you can really look at that situation yeah. and kind of piece Only it out. when I talk to my husband, and uh, she tries to um, crawl underneath the chair, uh -huh. and then she explains that she's sad or upset, and then the whole family will look at her and ask what happens, and then she doing it, so it's successful. Yeah. It's yeah, working though, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's working. Yeah, right? it's a great way just when you're in the midst of things, even if the child's not going to go through the full behavior support plan, these are awesome techniques to just use as educators, you know, to analyze the biter in the room. What's really going on? Why is she biting? What's happening afterwards? And how can we give her a different skill? Uh, okay, of course. Thought seeds, I think, are your next one. So I'll give you a few minutes to do thought seeds. I'm also going to pass out your evaluations for the day. This is cool. And then we'll wrap up and um, talk about what you like and would like to improve. What you could I'm sorry. And then we'll have a couple weeks off, which will be nice because that was a